So if you want to transform guilt and you want to transform regret into lessons, into that assist you and serve you, to let go of the emotion and learn from it and move forward and appreciate yourself a bit more, then watch this video. Hey guys, Matt again, Walk in the Road, Channel for Transformation, continuing on my book review of Steve Andreas's book, Transforming Yourself. And today, this one's a cracker, it's an awesome um, little uh, tip in the book, and that is transforming mistakes in the form of guilt and regret. And here it is, right here, this book right here. Transforming Yourself by Steve Andreas. Now, with guilt and regret, the, there's three main points that he makes in this little segment. It's only a page or two. And what he talks about is the first element is that you're feeling bad, you're feeling guilty because you have a really high value on something and you realize, be it a mistake or a decision you had to make, whatever it is, that you feel bad. And you feel bad because a value has been broken. Now that's a good thing from a perspective of, you can feel good that this positive feeling, this positive value that you broke is really high on your list. Otherwise you wouldn't care. <laughs> you wouldn't care. Now that is the first part of resolving guilt and regret, is realize there's a high value you've got on something, which is a good thing moving forward. The second part inside of that is willingness to make amends, which is an even strong indication as to this value that, ah, oh, it's unacceptable. Now that's a good sign that you've got this willingness to make amends for the mistake, or you've, you've got that willingness to do so at the time or in the future, or if you think back, you can make a, those little amends by just apologizing or you might do something about it or there might be a way that you can make amends in some way shape or form that's another sign of this value being super strong which is a thing to feel good about that's number two is that making amends and your willingness to do it makes it very strong so you've got that high value is number one that you've been broken but it's feel good that i actually have this high value Number two is that willingness to make amends, that willingness to at least apologize, or that willingness to, you know, talk to the other person who may have been, you know, put in a difficult situation because of you, be it intentional or not. It's just, okay, you realize the situation, you've acknowledged it. So that's the second one. The third one. Now this is another one which is really interesting. The third point. Now, sometimes we have a mistake or we, we have something we feel guilty about, and it was just an accident, right? It just was one of those really terrible, like a car accident would be an example, where just a split second decision got things in trouble. Um, it might be a, a situation where you're unconscious and you've left the toilet seat up or down or whatever is your rules in your house. Or it might be you've made a, a higher value decision to go to another job where growth was more important than just not upsetting the manager, right? Who's already there. So these are, these are situations where higher values are coming in. And now within that, you can think about that higher value. Like, is there some higher value you were chasing and you might've even made a conscious decision to make that thing that you knew would hurt someone else? Something that was actually higher on your list of priorities and you hadn't consciously acknowledged it yet, but it was driving your decision. Understanding that part is really helpful moving forward into your next situation. If you ever face with that, again, here's a way that you can both get your higher value met, consciously and unconsciously, and also have the value that the guilt was being triggered off by, the thing that you, we did the wrong, so to speak, and you're feeling regret about it. So can you get both? We well, don't have to go through this whole guilt loop. It's really valuable to understand yourself like that. And so with myself, I know that, yes, I feel good if I was leaving a place. I feel bad about the fact that he's going to be let down, my, 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 my employer or my, or my manager. But I also feel good about myself that, A, I want to go to a higher place. 
you know, I don't want to be held back. I want it to be, you know, go to the next level in my job. That's a positive thing. And so that was more important. And so it just had to happen. And was I feeling guilt and regret? Well, the reality is there's lots of other people that can be brought into that role. But I like the fact that I cared for my manager. That's a positive thing. And then also release responsibility for the fact that I'm leaving that job. Now, there are other things that we do where you might, maybe when you, you know, you've had too much to drink and you've done something you regret, right? So that's really important to acknowledge, but what was I chasing when I was drunk and I did that thing I regretted? Or don't you even remember? You know, there's lots of opportunities in that to try and understand yourself. The thing to focus on is that focus can be too narrow on the thing that you've broken and not widened out to those bigger pieces that you really want to acknowledge. So it's too narrow on the thing that was that, that caused the pain, but not the bigger picture. So that's where you can increase the scope and look at the big picture and say, was this overall a positive thing for me? Yes, that was, a, I regret that little part, but I can maybe resolve the bigger picture. And in the part where I had to make a decision, well, maybe you can uh, resolve that with the person at the time to say, hey, I have these bigger fish to fry and these were things that were happening, but I feel terrible that this consequence has hurt you. So there's a lot of things inside guilt and regret, oh my goodness, and we all hold on to them. And what we can do is start to resolve inside of ourselves, when we project into the future, how can we get all of our values met? If we're acknowledging them, if we're aware of them, if we know they're there, we can start to navigate it differently. So we don't end up with this guilt. We don't end up with this regret. We end up being proud of how we've behaved and finding another way to navigate through the situation. Guilt and regret, it's super powerful. I hope that served you today. Go and have a look at the books by Steve Andreas, Transforming Yourself. That was just a little two pager that he had in there in his three or 400 pages. And so that I find really helpful. When you've got a situation in the past you're feeling guilty about, look at the bigger picture as to what was going on. Look at your willingness to apologize or to, you know, to overcome the situation with the person and try and build the bridge back with them. These are all really useful things. Your willingness to do that. And then of course, ask yourself, was there a conflict in two values? And I had to choose between them because I had no choice. Look at the bigger picture, increase the scope, just so you can see it. But also future pace it. Go into the future and say, well, what could I do differently in the future? Go back into the past in your head saying, how could I have done something differently so that I could have got my values met? Firstly, you've got to be aware of your values. If you don't know what your values are, how can you possibly navigate them? It's like navigating the road with your eyes shut or navigating the road with no map. You haven't got your Google Maps out with your little blue line, you've got nothing. So you don't know where you are, you don't know where you're going, you might know where you've been, but how do you navigate that? You can't. So knowing your values is really important in resolving guilt and regret. Because it's the, the whole guilt thing is the fact that you've broken your own value. Otherwise you wouldn't care. <laughs> or the fact that someone's being hurt. Well, there's a value in itself. You don't like to hurt others. That's fair enough. That's great quality to have. But what can you learn from it so that it doesn't happen again like that? That you can navigate it differently and still get a higher level met without feeling or you know, destroying someone else along the way. Some things like leaving a job are different. Some things like leaving the toilet seat up are different, you know. Um, and you can put a value into your counter examples like we've done earlier in this video series where you can actually think, well, what could I do differently to make sure I don't have that feeling again? How can I incorporate more into what I'm doing? So in the case of leaving the job, well, the reality is I need to leave the job, right? And so I need to let go of the guilt because that's actually out of my control. Leaving the toilet seat up, I can certainly incorporate that so it doesn't happen again. And think about the values that are important when I don't put the toilet seat um, back down. So whatever it might be, making sure that you're fulfilling those qualities, the things that are important to you, and the things that are important to the people around you. If you know that you're going to be encountering another thing again and again, of course, build it into your response. But if you're, it's a one-off mistake, you can say it was, it was an error and I feel terrible about it, 
but I can let it go because I know that I had a higher value on the fact that I really wanted everyone to be safe. Really interesting as you explore that self-concept, guilt and regret. How can you let go of that? Where's the situation where you can go into the future, visualize yourself doing something differently? What are those values that are holding you back? What are the values of the thing that you broke? And what are the values of the thing that you're chasing in order to break that other thing? You know, like perhaps I was chasing growth, which was far more important than the value of the fact that my manager would be put in a difficult position in that he had, find, he had to find someone else. That was just the simple reality of, of the work-life relationship. And so, yes, I felt bad, but I still went there anyway because that was important to me. It was important that I kept growing because I was stagnating, I was getting flat. That's a value. I didn't want that anymore. And so I wanted to move forward. I wanted to get back into the game of a higher level. And so that's where I can step back and say, well, I don't feel too bad about that because it led to incredible opportunities as I move forward. I wouldn't have had some of the experiences without that opportunity of the next, of being able to go in and hand in my resignation letter and go to the new job. It's really important that you understand that higher value. There can be other more complicated ones like that though, where you know, you've got a guilt and regret because you really wanted, I mean, within families, you can get all sorts of things that are guilt and regret. You can get things like, I don't know, somebody that maybe your parents really want you to get married, uh, but you are not ready yet. And so because there's a higher value and you're feeling guilty to your parents that you're not giving them grandkids yet because you're at that age, perhaps. And so as you move forward, you've got that guilt and that, that feeling of regret about your parents. But it's also about you acknowledging the thing that you really want, which at that time might be freedom. Later on, maybe in five years' time, you might have to get married and have kids, right? So it's about what you're needing right now and what you're ready for and what, you, what your desires are and other people can project their desires over the top of you. So that guilt and that regret, what does it mean? What's going on? What's the focus? And so you can start to widen the scope, say, hey, is this good for my whole system? Or am I gonna shut myself down? Will I be just feeling terrible? So there's a lot in there. So what were the three things? I'll go to my notes. So firstly, if you're feeling guilt and regret, it's a good thing that you're feeling that you don't wanna let someone down. That's a good quality to have. The second thing is your willingness to apologize if that's appropriate in that situation. You know, that willingness to make amends means that that value is really strong, that you're willing to face the other person. It's a bit of a really strong sign. And the third one was the interesting question is, what was a higher value you were chasing? What's a higher value you were chasing as you move forward? And you were still willing to break the other value. But know that some of those guilts and not your responsibility. Some of those guilts, you can feel good that you didn't want it to happen, but there was a higher thing that you needed to chase, or you end up not loving yourself. Had I stayed in that job, I would have stagnated. Had I stayed in that job, I would have been resentful. Had I stayed in that job, I wouldn't have done a good a job. But instead, I found the higher job, the one that paid more, the one that gave me more status or responsibility, or whatever it is you were chasing. You know, and we shouldn't chase all those things, but that's what happens when we're younger. We chase those things. And so you can look at the situation. At the time, growth was number one. And so it was worth it. And I needed it to happen, or I wouldn't have loved myself. So you can start to sort of look at it. Now, what would I do differently? Well, I went in there, as far as handing in your resignation, there's not what I could have done differently in that situation. But if there's a situation where you've hurt someone's feelings, yeah, you can alter the way you go about it. There's lots of situations, oh, that didn't go down too good. I'm gonna have to pivot a little bit next time. Or how could I still have my voice heard and still let them have their say or talked over someone and you feel bad? You know, little things like that. These are the things that can help you to understand yourself, understand your values, understand what you're chasing that is you're know, willing to pay the price for that but also understand when you are feeling bad it's a good thing in a way because you value it most importantly learn a lesson from it and do it differently next time i hope that helps this is matt tate 
transforming guilt and regret by learning some lessons, understanding yourself, and moving forward with a different action the next time you do it. As always, subscribe, hit the like button, and hit the bell for getting my videos for free on a regular basis whenever I'm uploading them so that you know how you can transform yourself using Steve Andreas's book and all my other tools and techniques within the field of coaching. See you next time.